Hello, today we have Eric Poma, the CEO of Khalidi Biotherapeutics, trading on the New York Stock Exchange American under the ticker CLDI. Eric, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Khalidi is developing its proprietary red tail platform. It is a next generation way to deliver cancer fighting therapies throughout the body. What problem in cancer treatment is red tail solving that current therapies aren't? Yeah, so we've known for a few decades now that viruses can be a potent tool for eliminating cancer cells, and they do it in, in really two ways. One, they can replicate inside the cancer cell and, and destroy it that way. And two, they can alter the tumor microenvironment that the cancer cell exists in to really drive the immune system to recognize the cancer. So those are two fundamental properties that we've known for a long time about viruses. But the challenge has been if you directly inject the virus into a tumor, you can get really good efficacy. But most patients don't have tumors that you can directly inject into. They have metastatic sites throughout their body. So the challenge has been when you've tried to put viruses into the bloodstream so that they could go to the tumor, those viruses get eliminated by the immune system really quickly, so they never get to the tumor. Here at Khalidi, we're really excited because the Red Tail platform has been a way to solve that challenge. We've created a virus here that is really invisible to the immune system, but is specific to getting the cancer cells, replicating inside them, destroying them, and then alerting the immune system of the presence of the tumor. Eric, your lead program, CLD401, has shown strong preclinical results, including significant tumor regression in multiple cancer models. What gives you confidence that this program can translate that success into human trials? Yeah, CLD-401 is the first agent to come out of this red tail platform that we have. We've done two things here that make us pretty confident this is going to work in humans. One, the animal models we use, we're taking mice that have a normal immune system and they have murine tumors, and we're showing excellent regression and, and eradication of tumor of those models. That's a very high bar. Usually what you see in oncology is taking a human tumor, putting it into a mouse that's had its immune system eliminated so that it can't recognize the tumor, then showing some efficacy. So we're using a much higher bar here by using what are called syngenetic models. The other thing we're doing is we're taking the virus and we're putting it into human tumors ex vivo and we're looking at the immune system ex vivo and we're seeing that the virus is not being recognized by the human immune system ex vivo. So with those two pieces of data, we feel very confident that once we go into the clinic with humans, we should be able to replicate a lot of the results we're seeing in the animal models. Now, what types of cancers are you focusing on first and what does the path to clinical testing look like? Yeah, so again, the 401, is a virus that you inject systemically. It homes to different tumor types. It replicates, it destroys those cells. It alters the tumor microenvironment. And it also expresses a payload called IL-15 superagonist, which is another way to turbocharge the immune system to recognize the cancer. There's lots of nice data out there in the space that the cancers that respond really well to the virus, as well as the cancers that we think would respond really well to IL-15 superagonist include things like non-small cell lung, which is the most common tumor type in the world head and neck cancer, triple negative breast cancer. So those are the, the types of cancers we're really going to be focused on. Again, the study would be in patients who have unfortunately progressed on all available therapies, all available treatments with those diseases, have a very limited life expectancy. And we think here that we could really see activity very, very early in the clinical study. We anticipate opening our IND by the end of next year and going quickly to the clinic thereafter. Now, Eric, as you must well know, one of the challenges for many biotech companies is manufacturing complexity. How scalable and cost-effective is Khalidi's Red Tail technology when it comes to producing these therapies at commercial scale? Yeah, so the Red Tail technology is new to Khalidi, but working on viruses is not. We've been doing that for the last 10 years. We've opened IDs before where we have very good manufacturing capabilities in place here. We're excited because a lot of the new technologies that come out in oncology are very, very difficult to manufacture, have a very, very high cost of goods. Here, though, as exciting and as innovative as this is, we also have a cost of goods that's very, very scalable. It's equivalent to what you see for most monoclonal antibodies, for instance. And we've been showing internally that we can really create a lot of the virus and create it cheaply here. 
You recently formed a scientific advisory board composed of leading industry and academic researchers with deep expertise in drug development. Tell us about some of these key members, and I want to know, why did they join? Yeah, I think they joined based on the promise of what we're seeing with the Redtail platform and the CLD-401 in particular. Uh, we brought on Dimitri Zavard, who's uh, formerly at Memorial Sloan Kettering, now at Mount Sinai, just an expert in virology. He's been really ex ex expressed uh, and really impressed by the work we've been showing. He wanted to join. We brought on John Rangel, who's at uh, South Carolina Medical School. He's an expert in IL-15 super agonist. He was extraordinarily impressed by the data he's seeing early with us, wanted to join. And then we brought on Mace Rothenberg, who's the former CMO of Pfizer. Again, he's schooled in looking at innovative technologies, really like this, came on board. I think he'll be really helpful in terms of uh, developing the clinical development plan as we go forward. Beyond cancer, Eric, the Redtail platform could eventually be used to deliver other types of genetic medicine. How broad do you think this technology's impact could be over time? Yeah, we're really excited about the potential here of Vaccinia virus, which is the base for the red tail, uh, is extraordinarily adept at delivering genetic medicines. We've created this form that's essentially invisible to the immune system, and that we are getting better and better at being able to target it to cell types outside of cancer. So we think there is huge potential here in oncology, but then in indications like autoimmune, where we could deliver other kind of immunosuppressive payloads. So we think we're, we're just getting started here. We think there's going to be a um, a huge amount of value created over the near term here. Final question. What is the essential value proposition? Why should investors take an interest in Kalidi right now? Yeah, when you think about big jumps in uh, uh, medicine, it's usually coming when you have a new modality. So the first modality were small molecules, then you had monoclonal antibodies, then you had CAR-Ts, then you had bites. And the fields just jump forward in a huge way when you come up with a new modality. We think red tail represents a whole new modality in oncology and potentially out, elsewhere. We think it has a huge amount of biology inherent in that platform that can really be applied to multiple different tumor types and multiple different indications. With that comes a huge inflection in valuation. As we start to prove that out, and we think we can prove that out very early in our first clinical study, you know, uh, slated for early 2027, we think the valuations could expand dramatically. Great story, Eric. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time.